Lovely. Cheers. Bye. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. I've got an unconscious gentleman. He has severe traumatic brain injury. King's College Hospital, London. I think something hurt. One of the busiest A&E departments in the country. They'll be busy right now. Yeah, you will be 50 minutes, 30 yeah. minutes. King's is extreme, isn't it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> A place where love, life and death... <laughs> unfold every single day. Fall from a tree. It's probably absolutely trolleyed. I'm very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep thinking I'm going to cope. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department <gasps> in just one 24-hour period. Camino. Everyone should walk through an emergency room at least once in their life because it makes you realise what your priorities are. It's not the rush, rush, rush and the money, money, money. It's the people you love and the fact that one minute they might be there and one minute they might be gone. Paper. Hello, King's Emergency Department. Six minutes, one, two, zero. Lovely, thanks very much. Cheers out, bye. Red phone, six minutes. Red phone, six minutes. You are jesting. How many minutes? How many minutes? Second red phone, 12 minutes. Second red phone, 12 minutes. Can I have a receptionist to reach us to book in the red phone, please? Stuart is 59 and has a history of heart problems. Apart from the heart stuff, any other medical problems? Reef drops. OK. And what medications are you on for the heart? Are you on anything? Bisoprolol. Bisoprolol. Yes, hi there. It's Ferris, one of the a &E consultants. I've just seen a 59-year-old gentleman who came in as a priority call. OK. Consultant Firaz has worked in King's emergency department for a year. So filling defect in the super... in the SMA. OK. It's a bit clichéd, but yes, I have always wanted to be a doctor ever since I had my tonsils out at the age of five. Um, my parents bought me a Fisher-Price doctor's kit as a re reward. And ever since, the only th thing I can ever remember wanting to be was a doctor. OK, lovely. Thank you very much. Bye now. Guys, cath lab. Sure, I actually think you're having a heart attack as we speak. David, can you stick some oxygen on? Some high flow. Yeah. 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 I think that's the pain that you've had. And I think we need to just get you straight up to have another angiogram. OK. So nothing to worry about. I think we've caught things in time. OK. You have some patients that it's obvious what's going on. You've seen it so many times before. And then there's other times where, well, you really don't know what's going on, and it's almost... You're not gambling, but you're playing the odds. You're thinking, what's the most likely diagnosis? I'm one of the doctors. And what's your name? Is it, is it Reg? Reginald. And what's your surname, Reginald? 78-year-old Reginald is a retired dock worker from South London. You've been feeling well up until, up until today? Yeah. No cough, no fevers? He woke up this morning with severe stomach pain. Reginald also suffers from diabetes. OK. And you've had taken your insulin today? 
Oh, the left side is terrible. Is it? You feel dry? Can I see your tongue? Yeah, you look quite dry. Mm. Do you know where you are right now? No. Do you know roughly where we are? No. Do you know what kind of building we're in? Hospital. That's it. We're at King's College Hospital. Hmm. Yeah. Do you know what year it is? Eight. Ten. Do you know what day it is? Tuesday. Tuesday. It is Wednesday. Do you know, it's close though. All right, fine, just relax for a minute. Obviously, I'm really junior and I try to uh, give off this sense of calm aura. Even though inside myself I might be bricking it, I want the patient to feel calm because if you look scared, they're not going to feel very comfortable, are they? Oh! Oh, Jimmy! Of me. What, 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 what? <laughs> this? Oh, it's dying. Just taking pain, a pain of it. Your blood pressure? Pain me okay, all right. Oh. Is that better? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, that feel okay? No, these are. Good. Don't let that happen again. I'm sorry. It's fear and excitement. You've got this person in front of you, they've just come in, and you're not really sure what's wrong with them. All you know is they're not well, and whether you don't know what's going on because you experience, because you can't get any access, you can't manage them, whether you just don't know what's going on, and you're scared of someone probably just d dying under your care. I think that's really scared of. But usually the fear kind of stops a second. It's like I think you can probably equate it to um, performing. When I was like nine years old, I played my cello. My, my first solo, I was shaking, I was sweating. Then you got out onto the, into the, um, onto the stage, and um, then you just played away, and you kind of get onto your rhythm, and it was really nice, and you're quite excited, and people clap afterwards. Obviously, people don't clap in A and E, but you kind of get into your flow. No, we're not finished yet. We're just starting. We're just starting. Thank you. Next, please. Next, please. It's not Sainsbury's. Okay, okay. Let me have a little feel of his belly. So we've got on, on six units. And then we get him cast to try to see how much yeah, is in there. Yeah, doing that. You might need to pull I'm going to do my best. We might make you feel a little bit worse before we make you feel a bit better, but we will make you feel better. I'm just going to lie you flat. I need to examine your tummy. I sort of quite like to stay distant from patients as far as possible. Well, sometimes things that are more interesting and you feel more passionate about, you, you get more involved. Sometimes any father-like figures, there's the potential to be emotionally attached to them, I guess. Do you feel that you need to pee? Yeah, I want to go away, yeah. You want to go away? Maybe it's that that's agitating you. What we're going to do is pop a little tube in, into your bladder through your penis. Now, that sounds awful, oh. but it'll make you feel much more comfortable, I promise. Cool. Thanks, bro. That's all right. All right. Has he got a full bladder? Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit cold. Relax, nice deep breaths, well done. Oh, so it might be feel better. <sighs> this bit isn't nice. Hold, hold my deep hand. Breath. Hold oh. my hand, hold my hand. Squeeze onto that. Should be there soon. Once this oh, is in, I promise nice you you'll feel breath. better. Oh. I thought I was gonna pour out.
Come on, where's all the nurses at, man? There's one right there. Ralph Bronstein. Hi. Hi. They look professional with their little pocket watches. I should have one of them. Light uniforms, Rich. Yeah, they're not bad. Richard has twisted his knee moonwalking in a club. His younger brother, Jake, is keeping him company. Jake is really, really shy around other people because he hasn't really experienced what I have, so I, I'm kind of just giving him the, the heads up. Basically, who I am to Jake is what my dad is to me. Do you think people come to hospitals just, just to pick up girls? No. I think they do, man. That's you. Me? Me? Are you crazy? Don't come here purposely. Yeah, you brought your knee on purpose. Oh, to yeah. meet hot just, nurses. Just go out and be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, just to meet hot nurses. My dad is a really good role model. And for me to be a man and for me to do what men do, that's one thing that I need to turn into is, is a really good role model. I'm going to do the turn. It's like the two second look around. It's just like when you pretend to stretch your neck muscles <laughs> and just have a little pee. So she's doing her makeup, see? She's doing her makeup. <laughs> I've got some perfume if you want. Rich, how are you doing now? I feel terrible. Yeah, okay. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, no, that's understandable. No. That catheter hasn't made a difference, has it? No. You, you still feel, feel and look quite rubbish, don't you? Okay, okay. Before my dad died, he was actually living abroad. So every time I would go out to visit him, he would introduce me to his university colleagues or his neighbours. This is my son, this is Dr. Firas. That's how he'd introduce me. Uh, and you could just see his eyes light up um, with pride. He was, um, yeah. I'm glad, out of everything, I'm glad that he saw me become a doctor. You know, I, I still remember his face at my graduation. I've got a photo with him. I think it's the only photo I've got in recent memory where he's actually smiling. Uh, it's, it's nice. I've got that up in my study at home. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm leading, yes. Fantastic. Hey, everybody. He's 16 years of age. He was driving a motorcycle at speed, came off on a corner, no known loss of consciousness, moving all four limbs at scene in GCS 15 on our arrival. Injuries, he has bruising for both shoulders. Had no volume issues and how it be stable and transferred. Lovely. Thank you very much. Jade, can you do the primary survey for me, please? Thank you. Hiya. Yeah. Did you manage to catch that? Yeah, yeah, I think I made it in just Kim Big line in that arm for me and grab some blood. Oh, has he got two oranges? I just need, if you could just grab bloods from that arm for me, that'd be brilliant. Just down here, don't worry, just moving things around. Just pop this arm down to the side. Good man, that's excellent, and relax while I'm just doing this job. I'm just going to have a do with you, Charlie. Please guess, it's 15, equal me out. Any pain there? Reg, how are you doing? Are you flat? Have you got more pain? Have you just vomited? Yeah. Oh. I don't okay. know where my wife is. Does she know that you're here?
Do you know if anyone's phoned his wife? Well, Elias said that they were following by car and they haven't come in yet, so should I give her a quick phone call? Yeah, if we've got a number, that would be brilliant. Oh, is this Mrs Brown? This is daughter. Hi, my, my name's Dominic. I'm one of the doctors at King's College Hospital. It's getting worse. I'm really worried about him. Um, he's had five litres of fluid and his lactate's going up. Ooh. Hey, Reginald, I spoke to your daughter. Not my wife and daughter. Your, your daughter's going to come to see you. Your, wife, your wife's a bit too poorly to come see you at the moment, OK? My wife's poorly. Yeah. Oh. All right. OK. Yeah, Doing well. Did I tell you that I was seeing a gynaecologist that, that works here? She hasn't contacted me back in ages, so obviously she's, she's bored of me. Gyne Don't you know what a gynaecologist is? It's girls that kind of look at other girls, um, Brazilians. They're, they're kebab rolls. <laughs> but yeah, they basically analyse stuff like that, just if and if there's any problems or any skin like deterioration or something like that. Where is she? I don't know. I don't know where she is. So you're telling me there's no girls in school at all? It's around 14, 15 now. When he needs advice or when he needs someone to speak to, I'm there. He's met a lot of girls that have come to see me and stuff. Like, he, I think I've influenced that quite a lot. And he gets very, like, competitive now. Like, he's at that age where we can bring a girl home and give me the little wink and see it catching up now. So, it's good. I will go home. You go home? Yes, I what, will. What, to stare at her Facebook profile, Jake? Who? I don't know who she is until you tell me. I don't. Shit. <laughs> yeah, I think she's pretty hot. Reg, what we're doing, or sorry, I should have said, we're going to go up for a scan of your tummy. Just oh, I to... I've done this. I know you're not feeling very well. Mm. You're not very well, I know. I'm really sorry. And I know I promised that I'd make you better, and I know I haven't done that yet. OK. But we're still doing our best. Now and again, a handful of times a year, I will get a patient where I will spend more time with them. In his case, I spent, you know, a good few hours with him and he was the first person for, you know, a good while that had got me that attached. Saying. Mum is so cheeky if I'm in bed by the time you're finished, you're walking back. Yeah, right, woman. I've got toothpaste up her nose again. I look at her trying to laugh as well. Why does she say laugh out loud? She's like 40 years old and she's trying to be the social mum. You know, that scares me. You know, I deleted her on Facebook, man. Right? <laughs> liking every one of my statuses. I was like, yeah, that's it, mum. You got you got to go. You got to go. My mum and dad are a couple that I look up to, but she, she's... She's winning, she wears the trousers, and he knows that. Imagine getting a walking stick every day. Oh, if she gets old, I'm giving up. I'm leaving. My dad is a big part of my life. He gets up at four in the morning, he's back at six every day. He cooks and still has time to kind of show everybody that he's still kind of the father model, like he's there for us, and it's, it's a big deal to me because if I worked from four to seven, I'd walk straight up into my bed, order a takeaway and go sleep. But he doesn't do that and 
that's I look up to that because that's who I want to be one day is 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 the person who just supports his family and he's he's amazing he really is Reginald is suffering from a severe stomach complaint that doctors have yet to diagnose. We're just waiting for the results of that scan you had, OK? So the results the scan. Yeah, exactly. There's a few things that upset me. If you've got someone unwell, especially if it's someone that's previously completely fit and well, and the patient isn't getting any better, I find that really difficult. Oh, thanks. So, I've asked to put an NG tube in. Okay. That's really nice. Okay. Do you know something? What's that? In the 50s, I was in Egypt for two years. Two years of Suez Canal. What, in the army? Yeah. And you see her. It's also precious. There must be a commodity out there at that time. Anything's gonna happen. You don't look any better, do you? I'm mm. sorry about that. At one point, my father was working in Kuwait as a university lecturer. And my brother and myself were there visiting him for the summer. And this was in 1990. And I remember him disappearing one day at 6 a.m and coming back, and he just said, boys, get up, look out the window, and we just saw smokes and tanks and all sorts. And, um, and he told us, oh, we've been invaded. And he was so, you know, he didn't scare us, he was so positive, and he just turned it into this big adventure. You know, I was only a teenager, I was 14, you know, my brother was nine. My brother and I, as British citizens, we got evacuated through the British Embassy, but at the time, my father didn't have a British passport, so they wouldn't evacuate him. And I remember getting onto the bus to be driven from Kuwait to Baghdad, and um, he just said to us, um, chin up and cheer up. That was the, that's what he said to us. And, and whenever... Um, You know, whenever my brother and I go through hardship, we'll just say to each other, chin up and cheer up. This gas is getting worse. Yeah. So lactate's gone up to 9.8. Hello? Yeah, hello? <clears throat> This man is going to die if they do not take him to theatre and explore. His lactates. The results of the CT was a bit ambiguous, but he had this really bad metabolic acidosis with this high lactate that was getting worse despite giving him all the treatment. His pulse rate was on the high side. He was getting more agitated and more drowsy. His belly was getting more tender. And I was that worried about him. I genuinely thought he was going to die in front of me, you know, there and then in recess. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and phone your daughter again and say that I am quite worried about you and try and get her to come in. I know she had an appointment, but I think it's, it's quite important that she does come in. Oh, 
It's not just about him. It's about his loved ones. If my dad's about to die, as his son, I would want to know that that's going to happen. I actually missed the death of my dad. I would have liked to have been there at the end, and I missed out on that. So I think it's important for family to have that option if that's what they want. Hi there. Can I speak to one of the relatives of Reginald Brown, please? No, no, no. Is that Reginald Brown's home? Can I speak to one of his relatives, please? He, no, I know he's out. Um, is that his wife or his daughter? Is, that his, is it his wife? Hello there, I'm sorry to bother you. My name's Dr Sadadine. I'm one of the A&E consultants at King's College Hospital. You knew that Reginald was with us, didn't you? I was wondering if anyone was coming up to visit him today at all. The, the reason I'm, uh, I'm asking is I'm actually quite concerned about his health at the moment. Um, and I was wondering if his daughter was, was able to come up this afternoon, because I know that you're, you're, uh, it'd be a little bit difficult for yourself. Right. Do you know if she has a mobile telephone number? OK. I is there anyone that can bring you up to the hospital, Mrs Brown? OK. No. OK. When your daughter comes back, can you suggest to her that I recommend that she comes to visit the hospital? OK. Right. OK. All right, then. No bother. Bye now. His wife was a bit vague. She said that she knew that her husband was in hospital, but wasn't very clear on why he was in hospital. And when I asked her if she was coming up, she, she told me that she couldn't come up. And then, as we gathered more information, it dawned upon me that I think that his wife had memory problems herself, and maybe even had dementia. And I suppose that heightened things a bit further. Reginald, hi. Yeah. Okay. I've just spoken to your wife to try and yeah. see if she was able to come up, but obviously she can't come up herself. And your daughter's out at the moment. And you want to keep me? Yeah, we definitely we can't send you home like this, can we? We still haven't got to the bottom of what's going on. I'm worried that you have a little bit of an infection around your bowel. Is there an infection, yeah? Well, it's possible. It's possible. Do another gas. Is that for you? Yeah. Hello. Hi, it's Firas a &E consultant. Did you happen to speak to your boss? OK, I really need someone to come and review this patient, please. I am, I'm going to be blunt and I'm going to say this patient is going to die if he does not get critical care input. Um, the lactate's gone up to 9.8 now. What, 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 might, what might help is if someone comes and reviews the patient and then you can discuss your findings with a consultant. So if someone could do that, that'd be brilliant. And I'll, I'm going to get a hold of the surgeons and the medics again. Thank you. I felt frustrated as things weren't going as I wanted and I've got attached to him as well because he was stoical, he was friendly and he was actually a genuinely nice guy and it was worth taking the risk of taking him to theatre. It's very black and white. We either do this or we... or if he decides not to do it, then he needs to be offered palliative care, but what's not the right thing... I mean, it's, it's up to him, effectively, if we think he's competent. Yeah. He, he will want everything that we can do done. Good, and I think that's the right thing to do. I think he's the main carer for his wife. Right. So I've spoken to her on the phone. She really doesn't seem to have a concept as to how seriously unwell he is. So I'm just going to um, get on the phone again. Yeah, I think that's right. And, and, and he cares for his wife because she's physical or mental issues yes, or... She might be that she has some mild dementia or something. Yeah. Reginald being seen by our surgical colleagues who felt that what he needed to have done was to go to theatre and uh, have an exploratory laparotomy, which is an operation where you open the guts up and you, you have a look and see what's going on, usually to find dead gut and remove it. And if you don't do that, y you will die if you have dead gut within you. Help you, I'm Hi, Ms. Brown. My name is Andre Vitkay. I'm the intensive care consultant. 
the scan shows that there's a problem in the tummy. This is not something that can be fixed medically. No, I'm sorry that it has to be like this today for you. There's a blockage in one of the blood vessels that supplies your gut. That's probably made part of the gut die. And without an operation, unfortunately, if gut dies, you are likely to follow unless we can take that dead gut out. Do you think that my boxing days is responsible for this? No, I think this has got nothing to do with your boxing days. I think your boxing days have kept you pretty fit <laughs> so, that, so that you can put up with something like this. Because mm. you're looking really pretty well to me for somebody who's as sick as you are. And I think if anything, your boxing days have done you a favor. Yeah. They certainly haven't caused this. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the sort of thing that unless you have an operation, your life will be at risk. Difficult. It's difficult to say to people you might die. You're telling them the worst news that they can possibly hear. And you're just walking in there and you're having this conversation straight off. Never met you and I'm right into the most intimate part of your beliefs about what you want from your life. And let's face it, that's the real bottom line, isn't it? Am I going to live or am I going to die? All the rest is detail after that. I'm sorry to be so blunt about it, but I must give you real information to help your decision. I'm coming to the hospital. I'm sorry, I'm fine. I've got something. This is something serious, though, and something that we have to act on. There's no, it's not something that, you know, we can wait and think about and, and try some other things. We need, yeah, you make it an emergency, haven't you? It's, it's, a, it's a real emergency. So I think my view is that an operation is the right thing to do. So, of course, no one particularly wants to have an operation at short notice, but it is the only way. The likelihood, unfortunately, is that if you chose not to have an operation, and it remains your choice, you would die. If Reginald had decided, uh, you know, on balance, I don't want that operation. I'm of sound mind and, you know, I, I don't want it and I don't need to explain to you why I don't want it. That's okay. That's up to him. Our primary ethical duty to patients is to respect their autonomy in making decisions about that kind of thing. But if you don't give people the facts, they can't make decisions. Um, and you've got to give the facts as, as best you understand them at the time. Uh, and you've got to be honest about it, in my view. Is it a big operation? It is a big operation. I must, I must tell you, it is a big operation and it will carry risk. It's naive to say it doesn't carry risk. It's a big operation, it does carry risk. But, compared to your risk of dying without it, that risk pales into insignificance, in my view. We'll do everything we can for you. When will this happen? It'll happen today. Today? This afternoon. I don't even know what bloody day it is. Uh, I forget as well sometimes. <laughs> it's Wednesday as it happens. <laughs> okay. Here's looking at you, kid. I beg your pardon? Here's, Here's looking at you, kid. Humphrey <laughs> Gogo. All right. Here's looking at you. <laughs> I'll see you soon, Mr. Brown. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
swapped by a van driver up in London. She was uh, lost consciousness during his consciousness. It's fair though, it's a lactate of north of seven, probably not. Yeah. Uh, Doctors suspect that some of Reginald's gut has died. If they're right, it must be removed immediately or he won't survive. Two o'clock, he's still passing urine, yeah. still cerebrating, yeah. which means that he's, he's made of stern stuff. Yeah. Yes. So somebody's on a path that you've been involved in them setting off on. And there are a couple of things. I'm hoping that they're all right. I'm aware of the fact that they're coming back to my intensive care unit where I'm going to be looking after them. And you, yeah, you, you worry like hell. Um, because you, you, you want it to be, you want it to work hard for them. So, Ferrat, he's, um, I've spoken to him at some, you know, and I've said I think it's the right thing to do. I think he, I did, a, I, I did give him the option. I mean, I said, we can do it, and that carries a bit of risk, or we can not, but you'll almost certainly die. I mean, I really think it's the right thing. Yeah. Yeah, happy to go, yeah. It is hard when you see a strong man who suddenly becomes very vulnerable. I actually missed the death of my dad. You know, and there's days where I think, oh, I'm, I'm pleased I didn't see him weak and vulnerable, because I still remember him as being this, you know, fabulous, strong man. And there's days that I think, oh, I wish I was there so that he could have seen me in his last minutes and it would have provided him with some comfort. I think Cheryl Cole needs to come to her senses and finally call me, man. Too bad she won't. <gasps> she thinks she... She does. She She's... needs me in her life. She'll realise it soon. Yeah, like 20 years from now, she's so <laughs> she's so old and alone. I don't care if she's about 90, as long as I say this still be that. Cheryl Cole. <laughs> he could do anything he wanted to be. He's, he's got a, a very big heart. He's creating his own path. I like that a lot. If you believe in life, why not live it to its fullest extent? I don't see why people hesitate these days. You should appreciate every moment that you have, regardless of the situations, regardless of your past. You should just be happy and, and do what makes you happy, even if that's not going talking to girls all the time. Go out there and take risks, what's, what's the harm? I'm not saying go and bungee jump off everywhere and do crazy things, but just go do what makes you happy. Need I look good. Richard Sales. Oh, thank God for that. Ooh. Richard Sales? Yeah. Come on. Oh. Hello. Hi, come on through. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good, good. Should be exciting. Come on in and take a seat. Let me just sort this out. Clean up a little. Oh. Little brother, yeah. Oh, it's all right. right. <laughs> So what's, what's happened today to bring you here? Being under the influence, I've, I've obviously slipped. Right, OK. My knee popped out of place. Right. What have you done since? Have you rested it? Have you taken any painkillers? No, I took, I've taken painkillers here, but not at home. But then I just saw a nice girl and forgot about the, everything. Yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> you are terrible. Man. Don't listen to this man, OK? Oh, no, he's, the, he's the guy who he is because of me, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be the nice one yeah. that's like, yeah, don't bother with him. Go with his brother, he's lovely, yeah. all right? Just remember that. Everything he does, do opposite, and you'll have them flocking all over you. <laughs> Lovely. Can <laughs> <laughs> we get a porter to ultrasound, please? Porter to ultrasound. Well, really well, yeah. Really? Yeah. It's good, yeah. Good. Thanks. Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, I was a date last night. Really? Yeah. Oh, then we need gossip now. No oh, gossip, just, you know. Are you really looking for a second date, is the question? Yes. Good. Is it already booked for tonight? Are you wearing the same clothes as yesterday? 
Jesus Christ. I think, I'm sure I did see you I'm wearing not, that I was wearing yesterday. these trousers, but not this uh, shirt. Yeah, but you're these wearing those shirt. shoes, definitely. Oh, always wear different socks. <laughs> different socks. <laughs> uh, first date. I don't know, it was good, actually. It was really good. We met on a plane. Really? Yeah, that's pretty, uh... Yeah. You, you ended up sitting next to each other? Yeah. Any recess? A surgical register? Hi, have you just been with Reginald Brown? OK. OK. Firaz, the surgeon said they found nothing. They just opened and closed. You are kidding me. You are kidding me. After almost three hours, Reginald is out of surgery. Despite the doctor's worst fears, it turns out there was no dead gut to remove. He's, he's got a chance now. Yeah. My first reaction was overwhelming relief because I knew that that would be best for Mr Brown. And actually, would I do anything different? No, because in that situation, the number one life-threatening diagnosis is ischemic bowel. But then also there's that little element of disappointment where you think, oh, I was bloody sure that was a bit of dead gut. We definitely did the right thing, and if I was in that situation again, I would do it again. Um, although we didn't find ischemic bowel during his surgery, if he had had it, he would have died. So it's something we needed to do so that we could discount that as a diagnosis. A lot of things in medicine are mysteries. So we don't always have the answers, unfortunately. If we did, then, well, we'd be very special. The medical staff believe his original condition may have been caused by an accidental overdose of insulin brought on by the early stages of dementia. Reginald spent a further three weeks in hospital where he received more treatment for his diabetes. I take one day at a time. My dad always says that. <laughs> day at a time. Be lucky to be here. You make life what it is. You enjoy it. All these rough times, I know. But on the whole, my life has been a happy one. With the people I've been surrounded with, with the family, people outside my family. Wonderful days and wonderful times. If I can make a difference to a father-son, a father-daughter, husband-wife relationship, if I can give someone an extra five minutes, if I can give someone an extra several number of years, then that's, that's a good feeling. You've always got to strive a little bit more. Humphrey Bogart, if I heard that, I loved him. I think the reason being is that my father looked very much, looked like him. As if I'm looking at my father now, very close to my dad. He was proud of me, and I thought a lot of my father. I loved him so much. What a man. Oh, Christ. I shouldn't be crying, do I? I'm crying because I'm happy. I loved him. What a man. He's looking at you, kid.
cool. Five minutes. Add up to one of the cool. Five minutes. When the ambulances just keep coming and lining up out the door, it's just dooms here. Be all right. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. You're annoying me, bro. You shut up. I've been here for four hours yet. I'm in pain. What do you say to somebody who saved your life? You know, thank you seems very little. Thank you.